Ever wondered about the hidden Jewish families that steer the course of our world? In this video, we embark on an eye-opening odyssey through their stories. Get ready to be blown away. The Blavatnik family. Our story takes us to Russia in the late 1950s when Sir Leonard Len Valentinovich Blavatnik decided to swap borscht for the bustling streets of New York City. With a cunning mind for business and an accent that could charm the fur of a Siberian fox, Len Blavatnik entered the world of American capitalism. The Blavatniks are like the Russian nesting dolls of wealth. They've invested in everything from natural resources to media and technology. It's as if they're trying to single-handedly control the world's economy, one oligarch move at a time. But what's more intriguing is the Blavatnik family's entanglement in the world of politics. They've got political connections that rival James Bond's globe-trotting escapades. Len Blavatnik has been a significant donor to political campaigns, and his influence has been felt across the Atlantic and beyond. With their ties to both American and Russian politics, the Blavatniks have managed to keep the world guessing. It's like they've turned political affiliations into a high-stakes game of international roulette, the Goldman Sachs family. Let's journey back to the vibrant streets of mid 19th century New York City, where two Bavarian immigrants, Marcus Goldman and Samuel Sachs, founded a small commercial paper business. From these humble beginnings, the Goldman Sachs family's ascent to the financial Olympus was as meteoric as a GameStop stock surge. The Goldman Sachs family isn't your average bunch. They're like the Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers of finance. Their investment banking prowess is so smooth that it's practically a choreographed dance on Wall Street, a dance where profits and pizzas reign supreme. But what makes the Goldman Sachs family truly fascinating is their political power plays. They're not content with just raking in the money, they've got their fingers in the political pie too. Their connections and influence in politics are so deep that they could probably run for office themselves though they might have to waltz around some uncomfortable campaign questions about their financial wizardry. In the world of politics, the Goldman Sachs family is like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, except they're pulling out legislative initiatives and lobbying efforts. It's as if they've turned political contributions into a high-stakes magic show, complete with top hats and white gloves. The Fisher family, Let's go back to the early 20th century when Max Fisher, the patriarch of this oceanic opera, decided to leave his fishing business behind and sail into the world of finance. Yes, you heard me right. He traded in nets for stocks and fishing poles for power suits. It's like going from a dinghy to a yacht overnight. The Fisher family's rise in the world of business was nothing short of spectacular. They invested in various industries, from manufacturing to real estate, and their fortune grew faster than a trout in a stream. It's as if they were born with a nose for opportunity, much like a salmon swimming upstream. Now, what sets the Fisher family apart from your average business dynasty is their deep sea dive into the world of politics. They're not just about making a splash in the business world, they've dipped their toes into the political waters too. Max Fisher, the original financial fisherman, was known as a Republican powerhouse. He was a prolific fundraiser and had a knack for being the life of the political party. His influence was so vast that he was often jokingly referred to as the Jewish Pope of Republican fundraising. It's like he turned political contributions into a sophisticated game of go fish. One thing you've got to admire about the Fishers is their family values. They're as tight-knit as a school of sardines. Generation after generation, they've passed down their wealth and commitment to philanthropy, making them more than just business tycoons. The Perelman Family In the distant land of South Africa, in the not-so-distant year of 1943, a baby was born. His name? Ronald Owen Perelman. Fast forward a few decades, and this guy, with the charisma of Tony Stark and the financial smarts of Warren Buffett, turned his father's jewellery business into a multinational conglomerate. By the time you learned to ride a bicycle, he was already wheeling and dealing with the big guns on Wall Street. But wait, there's more. Ron Perelman didn't stop at jewellery. He dabbled in everything from Revlon Cosmetics to Hummer vehicles. 
He's like that kid who tried every flavor of ice cream at the parlor, but instead of a tummy ache, he made billions of dollars. But Ron Perelman isn't just a wizard of finance. He's dipped his toes into the political pool, too. He's a heavyweight donor to political campaigns and has rubbed shoulders with some of the most influential figures in American politics. If you were to ask him for his superpower, it'd be making campaign contributions disappear. But you know what's really hilarious? Ron Perelman once tried to become the mayor of New York City. That's right, the guy who can buy and sell companies like trading cards thought he could run an entire city. It's like a real-life Monopoly game where he wanted to be the mayor and the banker. The city might have missed out on that spectacle, but it's safe to say he's still ruling in the boardrooms. The Mars family. It all began with Frank C. Mars, the sweet visionary behind the Mars company. Frank had a knack for creating confections that left taste buds tingling. In 1911, he unveiled the Milky Way, the candy bar that would change the world, or at least the world of chocolate. Mars bars, anyone? It's safe to say that the Mars family isn't just skilled in the art of candy making. They've mastered the art of turning sugar into gold. But how did they go from the candy aisle to Capitol Hill? Well, grab a bag of Emma and M's and let's find out. While they might not have a candy-flavored Congress, the Mars family has made their mark in the political realm. They aren't your run-of-the-mill lobbyists, but their sweet support for political candidates is as influential as a candy bar at a kid's birthday party. From presidential campaign donations to support for various political initiatives, the Mars family knows how to use their wealth for some sugar-coated influence. They're like the Willy Wonka of campaign contributions, but with a bit more gravity. In case you thought their political prowess was limited to the United States, think again. The Mars family has spread their influence globally, with Forrest Mars Sr. serving as the U.S. ambassador to Belgium in the 1960s. Imagine the diplomatic skills you'd need to negotiate international relations over a bowl of Mars's chocolate-covered almonds. It's a delicate balance of sweet and savory. The Mars family isn't content with just being the kings and queens of the candy aisle. They've diversified their portfolio to include Uncle Ben's rice, Wrigley chewing gum, and even pet care products. So the next time you're cooking rice, blowing bubbles, or pampering your furry friend, remember, you might just be contributing to the Mars family's sweet empire. The Walton Family The Walton family's journey started in the heart of America, where Sam Walton, a man with the entrepreneurial spirit and bargain-hunting genes, had a dream. A dream of a store where everything was affordable, even for your grandma's penny-pinching grandma. Cue the five-and-dime store, and just like that, Walmart was born. It was a place where you could buy everything from a toothbrush to a power tool, all while wondering why there wasn't a buy-in-bulk section for toilet paper. Sam Walton's vision was simple. Roll back prices and roll in profits. His secret? The patented Walton yodel back technique. If you don't know what that is, you haven't been to Walmart on Black Friday. Walmart, as you know, grew faster than a viral cat video. They went from welcome to Walmart to we own Walmart in no time. And while they rolled back the prices, they rolled in the cash. Now they could have retired to a tropical island and sipped margaritas all day, but no, that's not the Walton way. You see, the Waltons had grander ambitions than a supersized shopping empire. They decided to dabble in politics. If you thought Sam Walton was a retail genius, wait until you hear about Alice Walton. She's like the secret weapon of the family. An art enthusiast who's got her own Grandma Moses meets Indiana Jones vibe. She built the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, where she showcases priceless American masterpieces. But you know what they say, you can't put a price on democracy, and Alice has shown her political clout, donating to various political campaigns. Not to be outdone, the Walton offspring followed in their parents' footsteps. Jim Walton, S. Robson Walton, and others decided they wanted a slice of the political pie, too. The Walton family has become a formidable force in the political arena, with a knack for political donations that rivals their ability to roll back prices. The Rothschild family. Our story begins in Frankfurt, Germany in the late 18th century. 
Maya Amschel Rothschild, a dapper, quick-witted man, opened a small business in a city that was just as confused about its direction as a cat chasing a laser pointer. Maya's cunning and shrewd financial sense propelled him into the world of money lending and banking, and before you could say compound interest, he was off to the races. The Rothschild clan quickly expanded their empire across Europe, establishing banks in Vienna, London, Naples, Paris, and Frankfurt, effectively creating the world's first multinational banking family. It was like Monopoly, but with real money. Now let's address the elephant in the room, the Rothschild's alleged political influence. Some people believe these money moguls have secretly been pulling the strings of world events for centuries, from funding both sides of Napoleonic wars to orchestrating economic meltdowns, it's all on the table. But the Rothschilds' impact on world affairs can't be summed up so easily. Sure, they had their hands in various political pies, but they were also just smart investors who knew when to buy, sell, and diversify. Their fortune and banking prowess, more often than not, were a result of pure financial acumen. And remember, conspiracy theories come and go, but money talks, and the Rothschilds knew how to make theirs sing. Plus, they probably had a good laugh at the idea of secretly controlling the world while sipping tea in their opulent drawing rooms. Now let's get to know the Rothschilds on a more personal level, shall we? These folks had some quirks that would make the Kardashians blush. Nathan Mayer Rothschild, one of the famous Rothschild siblings, had an eagle eye for business but was notoriously shy. He even communicated with his brothers via handwritten notes in their own banking office. Imagine having a family meeting via post-it notes. Then there's Ferdinand de Rothschild who married his cousin and built a jaw-dropping mansion called Waddesdon Manor in England, inspired by French Chateau. The ultimate power move, I'm so rich I built a French palace in England just for fun. As we conclude our journey through the intriguing stories of these families, we hope you've enjoyed this exploration of wealth, influence, and legacy. If you found this video as captivating as we did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating content.